can turn on hormones of safety, hormones of repair, hormones of health, hormones of wellness. These are all in our control. Less food, more protein, essential fatty acids, water, oxygen, mighty 90 essential nutrients, which you can get, of course, in the Healthy Start Pack. Kind thoughts, touch, massage, all of these. These are all ways that we can control our hormones. These are all ways that we can control our health. Another way you can classify hormones is by their chemistry and their biochemistry effects. You've got short-acting hormones. These are water-soluble. You've got long-acting hormones. These tend to be fatty hormones, and we talk about steroid hormones. These are long-acting hormones as opposed to the quick-acting hormones, which tend to be protein-based or peptides, as they're called. And then you have these super, super, super short-acting substances, and we're going to talk about those because those are incredibly important and incredibly fascinating. When people talk about their hormones, they're typically talking about their steroid hormones, progesterone, which has important relaxing effects, estrogen, which is a stimulating substance, potentially toxic substance as well, testosterone, which is a building substance, and cortisol, which is a stress management hormone. All these hormones are responsive to the environment, and all of these hormones, or potentially anyway, long-acting anti-aging healing and protecting substances. These steroid fatty hormones are the products of many cells, including skin cells, brain cells. Both the skin cells and brain cells make steroid hormones. But primarily, steroid hormones are, are made in the adrenal glands and in the sex glands. After menopause, a woman's steroid hormones are going to come from her adrenal glands. And this is very important because the adrenal glands are also making stress hormones. And the more stress hormones a woman is making, the less hormones are going to be, uh, the less raw material is going to be available to make hormones of building and hormones of youth and hormones of repair. That means more stress, less repair, more stress, more aging. That's why it's so, so, so important to understand how to manage the stress response, especially as we get older and especially for women who are very dependent on adrenal estrogen, adrenal testosterone, adrenal progesterone, adrenal steroids in general after menopause. If you're a woman and you're being talked into hormone replacement therapy, you might want to consider keeping your adrenal glands strong and healthy and unburdened before you dose yourself with toxic, yes, toxic hormone replacement therapy. Now, mostly toxic hormone replacement therapy involves estrogen. I'm not saying that all estrogen is a toxin, but it is potentially via, via chemicals, uh, chem, uh, via metabolism that occurs in the body. The body can actually turn estrogen into toxic estrogen. I would be staying far, far away. If I was a woman, I'd be staying far, far away from estrogen replacement therapy. And I know I got a lot of friends who, are, who are, uh, dispense estrogen replacement therapy, and there's a lot of women who love their estrogen replacement therapy. But you know what? If you're on a hormone replacement therapy estrogen, read the package insert. Read about the blood clots. Read about the heart attacks. Read about the cancers, the breast cancer especially. I'm telling you, it's a, especially if, you're, if you haven't focused on adrenal health, man, you are missing the boat if you're on hormone, re hormone replacement therapy and you haven't first focused on your adrenal glands. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with your phone calls after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 855-660-4261 is our call-in number. If you've got questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds, and get on a nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have a success story you'd like to share, love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 855-660-4261 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised in the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com. Com. Okay, we'll continue talking about hormones tomorrow. We'll talk about the other hormones. Not all hormones are steroid hormones, as it turns out, even though those are the ones that most of us think about when we talk about our, quote, hormones, unquote. And we'll talk about uh, some other very interesting hormones that we have control over, that we want to help, we want to have control over if we want to be healthy. 
And we'll, then we'll talk about some really, really cool hormones that are very ephemeral, vapor-like, gas hormones. You have, you have hormones in the body that function, that are, that are actually gases. And then you also have hormones in the body that are super quick acting, that are forms of essential fatty acids. If you've ever wondered why essential fatty acids are so darn important, the ultimate EFAs, for example, why they're so helpful, why they're so multifunctional, why they're so absolutely vital, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how essential fatty acids get turned into these unbelievably important, fast-acting hormones that nobody ever talks about and whose deficiencies are behind many, many forms of degenerative disease. We'll talk about that tomorrow and in the coming days as we continue our discussion on hormones, hormone health, all as it has to do with the amino acid arginine. All right, 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's hit the phones. Nina in Austin, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. What's going on? How can we help you? Um, I have um, a younger brother that um, has been diagnosed with um, epilepsy. Okay. And awesome. um, he has seizures um, quite often. Um, it usually is when he wakes up. Okay. Um, and now it's just happening very occasionally. So okay. I was wondering, and he's, he's not really into taking, the doctors actually haven't prescribed any meds yet. And he's uh -huh. what, not what kind really of seizures? wanting to take the meds. Nina, what kind uh, of seizures? You know, I really don't know the type of seizures they are. Okay. Does he convulse? Uh, Does he convulse or does he stare or is he like uh, No, no, no. He convulsed. He can both. Okay. All right. Here's the here's the deal with seizure disorders. The brain is an electrical system. The whole body's an electrical system. But but the brain is super duper electrical. It's conducting electricity. A, an, a seizure is a short circuit. Simply put, it's a short circuit. So the electrical energy doesn't flow the way it's supposed to be flowing. It flows in this chaotic fashion. So then the question becomes, what causes what causes the energy in the brain, the electrical energy in the brain to short circuit? And you're always going to find, as you should come as no surprise if you've listened to this program, you're always going to find inflammation, micro-inflammation, not, not big inflammation. This is so important. We talk about inflammation all the time as a major cause of disease. I'm not talking about broken leg or swollen ankle, black eye inflammation. I'm talking about microscopic inflammation, a beaver's dam that surrounds the cells. The beaver's dam that surrounds the cells keeps the brain cells in in the case of seizures, keeps the brain cells from being fed, keeps the brain cells from being oxygenated, and keeps the brain cells from being able to eliminate their toxins and their poisons. So again, it's toxicity, as we say all the time, starvation, suffocation, toxicity. That leads to inflammation, which leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxicity. So what do you do? Well, clearly, you feed the, feed the body, you, you nutriate the body to eliminate the starvation, and that means mostly the micronutrients. I'll tell you specific ones here in a second. And then it means uh, uh, suffocation, restoring oxyg oxygen to the area, eliminating suffocation, if you will. And then it means helping the body detoxify, most especially by not putting the toxins in the body. So first and foremost, the nutri nutritional component. The best thing you could do, the most important micronutrients, I should say, for epilepsy are electrical nutrients. B vitamins must have high doses beyond tangy tangerine. All the B vitamins, all of them. First thing in the morning, if you're uh, your brother, you said your brother, right? Yeah. Uh, if your brother's gone to the bathroom once or twice, he's not supplementing, first thing in the morning, he's going to be deficient in his B vitamins. On top of that, first thing in the morning, we get a surge of, of a hormone co called cortisol, which is designed to get us up and, up and about in the morning. Also, we get a surge of a hormone called serotonin, which I'm sure you've heard of, which is a, a daytime alertness hormone. Uh, a big jolt of serotonin, a big jolt of, of cortisol under conditions of nutritional deficiency, it very likely could lead to surgery, understandably. So make sure your brother is using the B vitamins. I'd be taking them before I went to bed if I was him, and I would certainly take them first thing in the morning and throughout the day. Vitamin C can also be helpful. And then essential fatty acids are a must-have for all brain health issues. Get them on the Ultimate EFA. Get them on the Healthy Start Pack. Have them start sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long, but especially first thing in the morning. And then uh, also, be also before he goes to bed, he might want to do a little bit of 
the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well. Excess sugar not only is a toxin, but it can also spark electrical energy. And he's got an electrical problem, so keeping the electrical energy stable is very important. Avoiding spikes in electrical energy, which sugar can cause, is important. And this is where the ketogenic diet comes in. And anybody who has a seizure disorder, if your doctor has not told you about the ketogenic diet, you need another doctor. You actually don't need any doctor, but you certainly don't want to go to the one you're going to if he doesn't know about the ketogenic diet. Let me spell that for you, Nina. It's K as in, as in King, E-T-O-G-E-N-I-C, ketogenic diet. It's a high protein fat, a uh, high protein, high fat, or they say moderate protein, moderate fat, but basically it's low sugar diet, low carbohydrate diet. Uh, some specific nutrients in addition to the B-complex and essential fatty acids, magnesium can be very helpful, so can carnitine, and so can coenzyme Q10. Long story, and also oxygen, don't forget deep breathing, slow deep breathing techniques, lack of oxygen, suffocation, a buildup in carbon dioxide, all of which can follow shallow breathing or poor breathing techniques can also be problematic, so make sure he's practicing, practicing his deep breathing techniques. Okay? Okay. Thank you so much, Nina. Have a beautiful Thank day. You I hope so we helped much. you out. You okay, too. God bless. Take care, ma'am. Take care, ma'am. Okay, uh, let's go to Florida. Welcome, Rod, to the bright side. What's up, Rod? How you doing? Good, uh, Ben. Uh, I was just having a question about uh, flax seeds and their potential link to cancer because of the alpha lauronic acid. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I know what you're talking about. Uh, there's, yeah, it's, it's not. Think to me what their rationale is and what well, they're trying to accomplish by this uh, uh, warning. I by freaking people out about flax seeds. First of all, let's talk about the good stuff in flax seeds. They're amazingly, amazingly filled with nutrients, especially, as you mentioned, uh, essential fatty acids. The problem is in something called lignans, L-I-G-N-I-N-S, and lignans have an estrogenic effect. And estrogen has been associated with certain types of cancer, as most of you know. But I'm not buying it because estrogen, the uh, estrogenic effects of flax seeds and the flax seed lignans are so mild and so gentle and so benign, I'm not convinced that they can be responsible for cancer. There's also a problem with the instability of the essential fatty acids in flax seeds. And some people feel like, uh, like when uh, flax seeds, and it's, it's really flax oil, by the way. It's not flax seeds so much as flax oil. Some people feel when the flax oil is processed, it can create toxic forms of fat. And it's really the processing of the flax seed oil more than the flax seeds themselves. Hang tight, Rod. I'll finish up when we come back from our break. If you're on hold, stay there. We'll get to you when we come back from our break as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 855-660-4261 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis communication network we'll be back after this okay we are back on the bright side talking to rod in florida uh rod real quickly here so there's three things with flat is rod still there by the way rod okay rod you there buddy rod rod can you hear me yeah yeah i got you okay three things about flax seeds i'm gonna go quickly here i want to get to some more calls three things about flax seeds number one you've got the uh the lignans l-i-g-n-i-n-s which have some estrogenic properties some people think might be associated with prostate cancer maybe breast cancer uh, i'm not buying it. in fact i believe that these lignans actually have a protective effect uh, the second factor is omega-3 fatty acids, like you mentioned, the alpha-linolenic acid. A couple things about that. You want to make sure that you're using, you have a omega-6s and your omega-3s in balance. So if you take too much flaxseed oil or you just use flaxseed oil as a source of your EFAs and you're not getting enough omega-6s, and I know some people don't think that is possible because all, all the omega-6 oils we eat, but it is possible because just because you eat an omega-6 rich oil doesn't mean you're actually getting omega-6s. So you, some of us, if you're just doing flaxseed oil straight, you may be getting out of balance. Your omega-3s might be out of balance with your omega-6s. And omega-3s, by the way, are alpha-linolenic acid. That's the parent omega-3 fatty acid. And the second thing is the processed omega-3 fatty acids. It may be an issue of processing, of heating and cooking, which can damage those essential fats. But the word essential means you've got to have it, and alpha-linolenic acid is essential. So to say that an essential fat by itself causes cancer, in and of itself causes cancer, is associated with cancer, I just find that a, a tough sell. And that's my response, although I know there's a couple studies that talk about that. I'm just, how long, I'm just skeptical. How long has it been, this study been out? On the, in the, there's only... The main how long has it been known that, or it's been thought that this... How that, long has it been uh, contested? How long has this connection been, been uh, made? Ah, there was a study that was out, that came out a couple years ago, and I saw a second study recently, but there's not a lot of literature 
it, it's difficult. There's not a lot of literature to support that idea. Um, it, and I, given the essentiality, the, the really important nature of omega-3s, I, I find that just difficult to believe. It hasn't been a long time. Uh, flax seeds, by the way, can be toxic. The immature flax seeds can be toxic, and, and you've got to be careful with flax seeds a little bit. So it's not like they're, it's all good when it comes to flax seeds, but certainly food-based or food flax seeds, flax seeds that have been approved for food use, they have some wonderful nutrients, including vitamin E, uh, the omega-3 fats, and protein as well, in addition to other phytonutrients, plant nutrients. I'm sorry, say that again. I, 